good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Apologies for the delay. We have a couple of uh, remote uh, speakers for the session. We're just having to iron out some coordination issues. Um, I think we should probably get started in the, uh, in the interest of finishing on time here. So um, I'd like to welcome you to the session on uh, national and regional initiatives. Uh, mainly around reporting on these uh, regional and national internet governance forums. And we have an interesting panel of speakers, uh, three here with us today uh, in the room, and, and two which we'll hopefully uh, be able to bring on remotely. Um, and the idea behind the session is to look at the digital inclusion uh, conclusions from these national and regional uh, internet governance forum initiatives. So with that, I think we should uh, invite the speakers to give a, a brief reaction, ideally about five minutes, uh, on this topic and, and to report back on the conclusions of, the, of their initiative. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Julian Casas-Puentes to uh, provide us with uh, first details and perhaps you could uh, provide some background on your personal role in the process. Thank you, Mike. Um, I will be talking on behalf of the Colombian IGF and um, where um, we have been um, uh, discussing some issues including access and um, it is recognized that um, internet access in rural areas is uh, difficult and um, uh, new disruptive models are required to connect these areas in a sustainable and efficient way. Identifying the needs of the communities and strengthening uh, the productive uh, processes of the peasants, uh, incorporating uh, information and communication technologies, appropriation processes, bringing high speed and quality connectivity and technologies uh, such as uh, TV white spaces connected to uh, fiber optics in near municipalities and uh, strategies that can uh, help keeping young people living in rural areas as they are migrating due to lack of opportunities. Uh, the initiative in rural areas must include uh, also renewable energy, the use of free software uh, that allow its uh, deployments, the design and construction of local services that are designed and implemented by the communities. The construction of community networks is considered as an alternative to bring quality connection to uh, rural areas and also incorporating cellular uh, telephone networks operated, operated by the communities. Investments uh, in these rural connectivity projects cannot be measured only by economic return to make them sustainable, uh, but instead governments and communications funds must consider the social investment returns that are uh, those that have relevance in these areas. In Colombia, uh, there are initiatives of community networks in different places which has been born and have been maintained over time, working for their sustainability and efficiency, allowing access to the internet to communities that previously have to move to urban areas to achieve connectivity and can now access to educational content, online government services, and other benefits. In addition to connectivity, community networks allow communities to empower themselves and appropriate new technologies, build their own path of participation in the digital world, adapt technological tools to solve local needs, and particularly uh, that of uh, marginalized populations, strengthen the community organization and establish their own sustainability models that allow lower cost for the provision of services and the reinvestment of resources in their own territory. So during the last uh, Colombian IGF uh, that was held at the beginning of this uh, month, uh, during the panel actions in internet governance to connect the unconnected was discussed the actions uh, that are necessary to take to efficiently connect the unconnected and uh, the, um, I would like to share with you later. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Julian. 
I think it was particularly interesting, this idea of considering the uh, social investment returns, because this is obviously something that's not often considered in a commercial environment. Uh, so now I'd like to see if we can bring on one of our, our remote presenters. Do we have uh, Obet Sindhi from the Haiti IGF online? Um, or do we have uh, um, Bram Fudzulani or Maha Zwayhead from the Lebanon IGF? Do we? None of them have been able to make it online. No one. Oh dear. All right. Well, uh, perhaps we should then uh, go to our, our next speaker here, Roberto, who mm -hmm. is going to uh, talk to us about uh, another Latin American context. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mike and uh, good morning, everyone. Well, uh, I come from Bolivia. I am coordinator for the uh, for our local IGF there. So we are, had a couple of uh, years in a row our IGFs, and um, this last uh, August we also had we hosted the Latin American IGF there. So uh, access is one of, of the most uh, important and as an enabler for all the different aspects that uh, are related to, to internet. Uh, in Bolivia, uh, we are increasingly aware of, uh, it's not a parallel space anymore, but rather an, a whole ecosystem. And uh, in this ecosystem, we, we access to services, to entertainment, to, to different kind of uh, functionalities which are important. And if we don't have um, the possibilities, and also if we don't have the service uh, with, uh, with uh, affordability, then it's really hard for us to, to get inside. Uh, statistics shows that we have about uh, near 50% of penetration, but somehow it's tricky because we, um, we, one thing is to have the potential to be connected to internet, but a different thing is to actually be connected to, to internet every, every time. And uh, that's how all the efforts that we should do regarding um, uh, improvement of uh, infrastructure uh, should, be, should, should be taken into account. Mm, what we feel is that the pricing models of uh, internet mobile operators is one of the things we should improve in the in the near future. Uh, right now, uh, in our country, we still uh, receive the services, and we are charged uh, in megabyte basis. So we have this small package that we have to afford and pay per each day or for weekly or monthly plans. And I think we need a different model, a pricing model, which will, should be more affordable, which should have a flat fee, for instance, in order to access all the time to, to this important service. So that's one of the things uh, we were discussing about access and uh, relating particularly uh, mobile services. So that's what I would like to start so far. Roberto, thanks very much for that, uh, and I think uh, you've really zeroed in on a particularly important aspect, which is the affordability. We hear this uh, figure quite regularly that uh, half the world is connected, um, but we don't really realize that many, many uh, of those half the world population don't actually, aren't in a position to be able to use the resource as fully as it might be used. Um, our remote coordinator, do we have uh, anyone online able to speak? Yeah, we have. Um, the name is not here, but it's. I can. I think she can hear us now. Okay, well, maybe we can ask them to introduce themselves. Thank you. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, she's speaking, but.
Yeah, let me try. Hello? I don't have cover. No, we can see the clip. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, we seem to have some technical difficulties. Uh, while we're hoping to get those sorted out, perhaps I could invite Anna Neves from the Government of Portugal to uh, give a short report on the, uh, the uh, conclusions of the uh, recent uh, Portugal IGF. Thank you, Anna. Uh, hello, good morning, and thank you very much. Well, um, our uh, last uh, national IGF, the Portuguese one, um, was held on the on the 13th of uh, November, so last week. And uh, the point here is that uh, the, all the ministries that were involved in in that uh, in that organisation uh, are the, the the ministries that are involved in a, in a very broad plan uh, and a program that uh, we have in Portugal that is called Incode uh, um, dot. Uh, 2030, and it is all about uh, competencies, and uh, the, the pillar one is about uh, digital inclusion and uh, um, literacy, uh, uh, digital literacy. So I don't know if uh, we are going to now explain a little more about our, our experiences, or if I stop there and then we will continue. I, th I think um, our speakers have been so brief at this point that perhaps I could invite you to uh, give some of your particular experiences. It would be very interesting. Thank you. Okay. So, um, uh, we have a problem in, uh, in Portugal, so I'm going to talk a little more about uh, Europe and uh, Portugal in Europe and Portugal in the world. So, we have about uh, uh, almost uh, one-fourth of the people in, uh, in Portugal never used internet, so it's a huge number for us. Uh, it makes no sense. And uh, besides, we have uh, a very good uh, coverage of uh, internet all over the country. So the, the point here is uh, really that we have a, a problem with uh, people living with the disabilities, uh, aging people, and, uh, uh, and other uh, vulnerable people. So. What did we uh, thought at the ministerial level? That it could be a very good idea to launch a program. So it was launched uh, uh, two years ago in 2017, uh, April. And it was launched with uh, five, uh, five uh, pillars. And these pillars are uh, extremely important to cover all the, so all the society and to try to make uh, uh, a point uh, in a, in a top-down approach to make it at bottom bottom up as well, um, and so of course a lots of uh, other uh, initiatives were taken in Portugal the, e the years before, but uh, uh, now we uh, we decided that maybe having this uh, holistic view from the government and having several ministers on board it will be very very interesting. So and it is. Indeed, very interesting because so uh, as I said, we, we have these five pillars: the the first one, digital and uh, di digital inclusion and digital literacy. The second one is about education. The third one is about qualification, requalification, reskilling, upskilling, and uh, the the fourth one is uh, is um, is uh, is about specialization. So it's to uh, it's for the graduation, so uh, to to think about the specialization on uh, on ICTs, and the fifth that is not normal at all to to be part of this kind of uh, of programs or initiatives about the digital inclusion is about new knowledge and uh, about the new and uh, future and uh, emerging technologies. Uh, because everything is very connected, is, and everything is, is linked. So we have to think about uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence, and we have to think at the same time about digital inclusion. The novelty here is that we have so many ministers on board, so I'm not talking about ministries. Of course, the ministries then, they have to, uh, to be part of it. But uh, we are talking about ministers that put budget from, uh, from, uh, from their portfolio 
too engaged in this, uh, uh, in this INCODE.2030. So as you can see about this name, is about to have a, um, uh, a program, action plan, until uh, 2030. Um, so we are working together with uh, a lot of different uh, uh, actions, measures, and uh, together uh, with, uh, and with other stakeholders, uh, we are building up this kind of, uh, of uh, initiative uh, that is uh, making people from uh, other, uh, other parts, and I mean in a bottom-up approach, that they want to be part of this movement. So the point here is to make these things to move and to make it at, uh, as um, a good thing that exists in Portugal. It has budget. And uh, so uh, you, it's like that. You have to be part of it. Otherwise, you will never uh, exist in the digital age. Um, and so what happens is that we, we do a lot of things together. And uh, besides these action lines and these measures that we are putting in place, we organize our, our Portuguese uh, IGF. And uh, um, each year, and this year, uh, it was uh, uh, in, in this collegial <coughs> manner. We, we choose the best things that we thought that the, the Portuguese society was asking and was needing. Uh, but the, the main line, the structural line, is really digital and uh, is digital inclusion and digital literacy, that, that they are tremendously important for our daily lives and for this, for this digital transformation. So if you want that, I can elaborate a little more on other things. Maybe later. Uh, no, thanks very much. And uh, I think uh, it's interesting to note here the um, focus on capacity building. I think uh, it's very easy to focus on the, the hard pieces of the uh, infrastructure and uh, policy making and regulation, but in fact those areas are probably easier to solve than the actual uh, human capacity building. So I think that that's worthy of note. Uh, and yes, this, I think again we're hearing uh, this idea of the ecosystem approach coming up more and more frequently. Um, do we have any uh, online uh, participation that's working at all yet? Uh, I think that we have a technical problem, so we can hear her. Uh, so maybe she can try again to speak to see if it's working. Okay, let's give it a quick go. Hello. Oh, oh it's, it's working. working. Ah, good. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, please, please go ahead. Go ahead. Ooh, I'll, I'll turn off the mic. Hi. So this is Maha Zwaihid, uh representing Lebanon IGF. Uh, I work at the American University of Beirut, and we are part of the Lebanese Internet Governance Forum. Um, basically, uh, uh, I uh, heard uh, in this session um, uh, mentions of uh, uh, issues of uh, literacy, uh, economical barriers, uh, uh, technical barriers, and uh, also this year in uh, our Lebanese Internet Governance Forum, we are also uh, focusing on uh, accessibility for people with special needs. So um, uh, we are uh, uh, in Lebanon, uh, basically. Uh, this is still at a very initial stage, uh, while um, in uh, many other uh, uh, leading countries, uh, there are more regulations and standards in place to uh, make sure that uh, internet access is available for um, uh, the biggest portion of, uh, of uh, the public. Uh, so uh, basically, there are efforts now and collaborations and uh, uh, initiatives and actions uh, between academia, uh, uh, the governmental sector, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, industry leaders uh, to uh, start implementing uh, mechanisms and uh, regulations that would uh, and standards that would ensure uh, internet accessibility for uh, for the public, uh, mainly uh, people with special needs. 
Uh, uh, thanks. thanks uh, uh, that, that was, was Maha Zwahied from the Lebanon IGF. And I think, again, it's worthy of note here that there is an increasing uh, focus on um, inclusion for vulnerable groups and uh, people with disabilities and other marginalized uh, people who have been left behind by the digital revolution. So thank you, Maha. Uh, do we have uh, any other remote speakers at this point? I believe there was uh, Obed Sindhi from Haiti IGF uh, planning to, to remain. All right, well, um, perhaps I could uh, uh, invite um, Julian to, to do some follow-up comments um, to elaborate a little bit on the conclusions from the Colombian IGF. Sure, thank you. Hello? Yeah, okay. Um, during the session of uh, access and uh, um, uh, internet governance uh, in, uh, in Colombia and IGF, uh, there were uh, several um, uh, comments on the, um, on the panel to, um, uh, uh, to, to, to identify which are the uh, facilitating aspects that uh, can um, uh, um, uh, increase or, or, or can uh, in some way um, uh, benefit the possibility of uh, connected uh, unconnected. From the point of view of uh, civil society organizations, uh, we uh, present um, um, some considerations uh, about uh, community net networks based on uh, our experiences but also experiences from other countries like Mexico, Argentina, South Africa, and Catalonia. So we identify that assigning spectrum bands in a small areas uh, where there are no connectivity at all and the exemption from costly licenses in these areas could be a positive um, facilitating aspect. Also, um, the secondary use of the spectrum so that others can uh, use it where it's not being used and grant licenses to non-for-profit uh, social initiatives. Um, access to the communications funds in Colombia, we have uh, the um, uh, operators uh, giving uh, uh, financial resources to the communication funds so that can be used to uh, bring uh, connectivity to communities that are not connected. And um, uh, we believe that finances uh, to other models such as community networks uh, and um, uh, could uh, could also help to reduce this digital divide. Um, investing resources in capacity building, uh, new technologies, and community networks. Also, uh, in Colombia, we have a uh, uh, large coverage of uh, fiber optic in uh, municipalities, in, uh, and um, but the. Uh, connectivity to that uh, uh, infrastructure is still very uh, little, uh, so uh, it's important to uh, facilitate access to this infrastructure and to uh, guarantee the interconnections with other networks. Um, we identify also the importance to have uh, um, a, def a legal definition uh, for community networks because um, there is no um, description under Colombian law, so it's difficult to get uh, uh, more uh, support uh, for this kind of uh, initiatives. And um, also uh, regarding the um, uh, access to spectrum, uh, it's important to simplify licensing and authorization, and also uh, in implementing a spectrum sharing mechanisms. Um, and also uh, were discussed uh, lower tax charges uh, to import equipment for the deployment of uh, community networks and more flexible revolu uh, regulation uh, for community operators uh, um, talking about taxes, charges, and so on. And um, 
uh, one facilitating aspect was Identify as well as they use a free and open source, source software. And um, also there are, were uh, another um, um, uh, facilitating access uh, raised by other uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, which is the importance of a spectrum allocation by establishing mechanisms in the allocations for operators to deploy infrastructure in unconnected rural areas to maximize social benefit. So in Colombia, there are called uh, obligations to do, obligaciones de hacer, that seeks that the operators, instead of paying taxes, or their obligations to the communication fund undertake to deploy infrastructure and expand coverage in this way. Also recognize that there are more options to reach the unconnected population, as in the case of community networks and small operators. Uh, the use of different uh, technologies, such as uh, TV white spaces, to improve coverage, especially in rural areas. Also, emerging technologies and different alternatives for the supply of electricity that is a challenge in these areas. Um, develop regulatory sandbox uh, with regulators that promotes the use of new technologies to promote connectivity within a legal framework, promoting regulatory flexibility, uh, implementing a spectrum sharing again, and um, also from the academy, it was stated that uh, it must be defined uh, as access. Uh, it is a definition that ensures that communities are well connected and access today is uh, a necessity to exercise the rights uh, of citizens. Um, infrastructure and access deployments must be accompanied by strategies of appropriation of technology to communities and research processes and internet governance models as well. Um, promote access to local governments that in some cases is uh, very low. And finally, facilitate access to the financial resources of the communications funds was uh, stressed again. Uh, thanks, Julian. Um, I'm happy that you've raised the issue of spectrum because that's become increasingly seen as an issue for connectivity in remote and rural areas, especially in developing countries, where in many cases, even though the spectrum has been allocated at a national level, it remains unused in the remote and rural areas. And also, as you mentioned, the universal service funds and obligations are a key mechanism for him improving inclusion and I think a number of them are now focusing more on the uh, capacity building side rather than just purely on laying out inf new infrastructure. Um, Roberto Zambrano, perhaps uh, if you'd like to give a few brief uh, observations and comments before I open it up to the floor. Sure, thank you. Uh, well, in order to produce uh, tangible outcomes regarding access, we believe that we think to involve uh, most of the actors in our communities. We particularly need to Im involve the civil society. Uh, there are several actors, but I think there are quite few very active ones. And uh, of course, part of the civil society includes also universities. Universities plays uh, uh, an important role in order to uh, provide the, the technical view also for solving these uh, this, uh, access issues that we usually have in our, in our countries. And uh, the other important sector, of course, is the, the private one. Uh, the operators need to uh, understand that different pricing models, new pricing models, the need to expansion their infrastructure is also important as you said before, particularly in the country areas, in the rural areas where we really have lack of infrastructure. And uh, then, of course, the government is the one that, uh, that plays a key role in order to provide incentives to, to the private sector. Um, and one is incentive, of course, but the other part is to also put some pressure I made them understand that if uh, we include more people in all internet ecosystems, it's also going to be good for them because they are going to increase their their business model. 
Uh, thanks very much there, um, Roberta. I think it's important to raise this issue of being inclusive of all the different stakeholders or at least trying to uh, leverage the potential role that each of the stakeholders can play. Um, on that note, uh, can we uh, open up uh, the uh, floor to see if there are any observations or questions or comments? Yes, especially from other IGF initiatives. Uh, I, I think you just need to come up to one of the uh, freestanding mics in the in the aisle there to to uh, speak, so that we can all hear you. So please stand up. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. My name is Keith Andere. Um, I'm from um, Kenya. I represent the Kenya IGF as also the African Youth IGF. Um, just a brief background from Nairobi where I come from in terms of access, what um, we are doing to promote access. Um, one of the things that we are doing is um, building um, community innovation hubs where it's sort of like a last mile um, program for, led by the government to ensure that um, the local actors and uh, those marginalized have access to connectivity. It's free of charge and also the government is pushing um, connectivity in schools and public institutions, hospitals, just to ensure that um, we have access to, um, to the internet where most of government services you know, have, um, have been pushed online. The other aspect is uh, USF, Universal Service Fund, where um, the regulator of telecommunications um, is providing part of um, part of the fund to support the telcos to, um, you know, build infrastructure in places where it's not economically viable for telecommunications to, um, to set up um, infrastructure. And also, yeah, it's now a law that um, telecommunications are um, supposed to share infrastructure. So in that sense, the cost of, um, you know, setup that is usually transferred to the consumer is um, is cut and reduced down to all of us. However, um, having said that, um, from the panelists, I've had a lot of um, interesting comments and observations. Um, my interest is how do we build synergies, uh, especially around capacity building, you know, and learn from each other, learn from um, the best practices that um, each country is doing, uh, and see how we can incorporate each other, especially developing countries. Um, we really need to build synergy and see how uh, we can work together and borrow some best practices. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Kenya, and uh, thank you for highlighting the role of, of public access, uh, innovation hubs, and uh, well, in particular also infrastructure sharing, which is an issue dear to my heart. So thanks for that. And uh, uh, are there any other questions? Uh, I'll uh, allow responses from the, the panel f uh, to a couple of questions just to aid in efficiency. All right, then. Uh, I don't see any other hands raised, so um, perhaps uh, we could have some reactions from the panelists around the issue of how to build synergies. I think clearly this kind of event here is one way of doing this in terms of uh, sharing knowledge and best practices, but I'm sure there are perhaps uh, many others. Um, Anna, do you have any um, observations to make on the issue? Uh, yes. When I was listening this uh, uh, this intervention was, I, I, I was thinking in, uh, well, we have these messages from our uh, Portuguese uh, internet, um, and I was uh, uh, reading um, a part of it that was the first panel that we had uh, that was about what kind of internet do we want and the cooperation in public policies at national and global levels. So. Synergies are always very difficult, uh, even if they are at national level, if, if they are at European level, or if they are at, uh, at the global level. But uh, um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to, to react with, this, with the discussion about uh, infrastructure, because infrastructure, I think, that is something that a lot of people is, is very engaged and aware, and uh, the need for uh, 
to, to, to do much more on, uh, on, uh, on this part. Uh, but I, I like to read uh, three paragraphs from, uh, from our uh, national IGF. That, uh, I think it could be, um, well, food for thought about this, this, uh, this kind of uh, synergy and about this new ecosystem that I think that we are living it, that we are living in, sorry. Um, and the point here, the main point that I'm, I'm, I'm going to make uh, and I want to do with uh, and reading these uh, three paragraphs, it's to make people uh, aware that maybe multi-stakeholderism is not really the right response to this kind of uh, synergies that we need. It's much broader. I think that we are living in a different ecosystem now, and uh, the, the several actors, they, they have a different uh, role as well. Um, and, uh, and why? Because we are all users and the internet must, uh, all the public policies must uh, bear in mind that they are for the user because we are users, everybody is a user. So in a single panel, that was the very first one, the one that I was uh, talking about, the title was what kind of internet do we want? Cooperation in public policies at national and, and global levels. So in this single panel, we were enriched with the polarity of existing ideas, but which eventually come together. Uh, it is generally agreed that the user comes first. In order to provide the best response faster, making, making it clear that the separation between companies, governments, and consumers is only artificial. The discussion about regulation is unanimous regarding the duty of its existence. It leaves no doubt that it brings indispensable factors for the user, such as transparency and trust in the use of the internet. Thus, regulation must accompany, however complicated it may be, technological changes. Trust is also brought over by the concept of ecosystem used to encompass all users, a way to act as a, a, a world. Uh, the concept arouses contrary uh, opinions, considering that it can mean hierarchy where the strongest come out victorious and where the, the viability of injustice is a fact. So this, this, um, this uh, rose uh, a very interesting discussion because uh, ecosystem is not where the most stronger is the one that uh, wins. The, is it in the multi-stakeholderism that is happening? and we have to stop that to, from happening. So it's about to have uh, all people together and not to make this kind of silos, like uh, governments you know, in, uh, in a place, companies in the other place, and civil society in the other place. Well, it's very artificial. And after 10 years of uh, being uh, and, and covering this kind of, uh, uh, of, the, of the theme, um, I really think that we are in a different stage and we cannot continue to work like I'm a stakeholder from this group, so in a multi-stakeholder approach we can get what we want to achieve. I think it's wrong. We are not there. I think that our development evolves in a different way. The final paragraph that I, I'd like to share with you is Advantageously, the internet provides the user with the idea that they can be into places at the same time and offers a vast network of contacts and information. However, the use of the internet improves once the user understands how it works, and there should be a clear commitment towards education about what the internet is and how it works, because one day, because one day users will also be the ones responsible for regulation. So it's all a thing of to make people like-minded and to see what they want in this world where internet and the web are doing their path and uh, this, it is where we live. My comments. <laughs> Anna, thanks really. That was very interesting and I, I think uh, this is echoing quite a bit of the themes I've already heard at the IGF. We can't continue to think in terms of the old models and that we really need to 
take new approaches to dealing with these problems. And I think uh, thank you also for highlighting the issue of trust because uh, you know without trust and ethics we really we can't continue to operate as a cohesive society. Uh, Julian, do you have any uh, final remarks as we head into our last three minutes? Uh, yes, uh, perhaps uh, highlighting that um, during this year uh, there were an international work workshop on regulation uh, of the regulator in, in Colombia uh, uh, and um, uh, we had the opportunity to be invited as uh, civil society organizations uh, coming from um, the different countries. Uh, where we present this kind of initiative of uh, community networks. And um, it was interesting to see regulators from all over the world recognizing uh, that um, these uh, are innovative uh, alternatives to facilitate communications uh, to people, of people who are not yet connected. And uh, taking into account the regulatory processes that facilitates the deployment of community networks initiatives. So, uh, for us, was uh, very important to see that uh, regulators are also considering opening, uh, for instance, uh, access to spectrum and other um, uh, regulations uh, that will uh, facilitate the uh, deployment of these initiatives. And also during um, um, uh, a regional, uh, a global uh, community network meeting that uh, we had, um, some of the cases that uh, were uh, mentioned is uh, um, initiatives that um, has been implemented to connect uh, schools uh, nationwide, uh, nationwide and in some cases to favor access to the community at times after school classes and also um, um, universities that are providing their um, um, uh, infrastructure, their connectivity during the weekends or after uh, classes uh, are uh, facilitating uh, those uh, communities that don't have access uh, nearby, uh, running by community networks that can uh, use that uh, kind of um, uh, connectivity is also an interesting um, alternative for providing connectivity to uh, those communities. Uh, thanks, Julian. Yes, uh, that's a good point, and I'm glad you raised about the. Uh, it's a kind of infrastructure sharing of, of uh, existing resources to broaden the uh, availability to surrounding communities in terms of the educational system. So thank you for that. Uh, Roberto, do you have any uh, reactions or final comments? Yes. Um, well, first, answering the, our friend from Kenya, um, I think uh, we need to increase uh, our coordination our, and, and, and communication channels. Uh, it was shocking to know, actually, that yesterday we had a panel. Uh, I, I attended to a panel where the people in in the panel mentioned that here, even here in Germany, they they have problems regarding connectivity. They are not reaching all the all the places in rural areas. So imagine if in in a developed country we have this kind of issue. What's going on in our uh, developing countries? And it's the same situation in, in South uh, Africa as well as in South, uh, South America. And uh, I think we, we have a lot to, to exchange between us in terms of lesson, lessons learned and, of course, uh, how we solve it, particularly problems or issues. I want to actually talk about one that uh, uh, it's related uh, to the creation of our local IXP Internet Exchange Point back in 2016. Um, as you know, this kind of infrastructure, IXP is a very important one to, to reduce prices and also to get a better connection. Uh, the problem in our case was that um, they, they only included the big ISPs. Uh, the ones that had international connections. We're talking about far, four or five uh, ISPs. And uh, there were several smaller ISPs that wanted to be connected, but because of some regulatory approach, they, they couldn't do it. And that is one of the important uh, aspects of having uh, an NRI 
And I support, as Anna was saying before, it's really important to get all of them together. We managed to have a panel in which we had the Vice Minister of Telecommunications, we had the regulator, we had uh, the, the one of the representatives of these small, smaller ISPs, and we have the, the director of the IXP, the Internet Exchange Point. So we raised the, the problem. Uh, after that, four or five months later, we asked it to have a formal meeting with the vice minister. Uh, again, we, we get together all of the actors. And finally, um, six months later, we managed to, uh, well, to convince them to adjust the regulation. And right now, these smaller ISPs are working inside the ISP. So that's how important and how, uh, and how nice is the potential that this kind of uh, debate, discussion, places like the local IGFs can, can provide. Uh, thanks, Roberto. Thanks for highlighting the importance of interconnection in particular, which is often an issue that's glossed over, and uh, indeed uh, how to bring all the bigger and smaller players together in the same space is often quite difficult. Uh, we're slightly over time, but I would like to give an opportunity to our um, remote uh, presenter to see if she has any final remarks before we close the session. Uh, Maha, please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, uh, basically, um, um, just tying back to that, to the point of uh, creating synergy in uh, capacity building. Well, what we are trying to do initially in Lebanon, because I know our experience is very similar to uh, to similar countries. Uh, what we are doing is we are trying to channel it as much as possible through the governmental bodies and uh, through the syndicates. So basically, we are trying to use national platforms to create the national reach. And of course, uh, creating user groups and uh, uh, trying to come up with an actionable plan that uh, we can uh, follow on a national level uh, using, as I said, uh, uh, national uh, entities such as uh, professional syndicates, uh, governmental bodies, uh, and academic bodies. Uh, that's it, basically. Thank you. Uh, thanks. thanks. Thanks very much, Maha, and uh, I'm glad you raised the issue of building up special interest groups or user groups, which can be a very powerful uh, uh, force for uh, lobbying and, and uh, vocalizing particular positions that, that need to be taken into consideration and also the importance of uh, developing a national plan. Uh, so with that, I don't want to keep you from any of your uh, uh, next sessions and uh, I thank you very much for attending this one and, and please give a round of applause to the panelists. Thanks a lot. <laughs>